Order, can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Here. Todd Marsh. Here. Carrie Clark. Here. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Here. Crystal D. St. Croix. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Excused. Susan Tierney. Here. I would like to welcome Mrs. Martinelli and Miss Kay's kindergarten class to do the pledge this evening. We are so happy. So if everyone can please stand. And if, if everyone can remain standing, uh, we have a very honor, honorable senior, Lucas Kelly, um, to play the Star Spangled Banner for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. How lucky are we to start off? Nice job, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Can you come every week? Oh, that's great. Yep, that's great. I know, thank you, Lou. I wanted to keep them up here, but. It is wonderful. That was incredible. Thank you so much. We are going to start by um, opening the floor for comments by visitors. Any comments by visitors this evening, please approach the podium and state your name and address. We'd be happy to hear you. All right. Starting a bit of a new agenda item in the beginning of our agenda, comments by board members. Uh, this is our first meeting for uh, agenda item um, in early in our meeting for comments by board members. Uh, if you feel like we'll have another opportunity at the end of the meeting to speak as well. But yeah, board member Clark. Yay, I love comments by board me members in the beginning. Um, that was lovely. I love having the kids here um, singing or speaking with Star Spangled Banner. No. The Pledge of Allegiance, that's what it was, I can't think. Um, they were adorable, and Lucas Kelly, great job. That was amazing, I'm so excited. That's it, thank you for coming, that's all. Yes, Board Member Tierney. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we start every school board meeting with uh, the students leading us in the pledge and the, and the Star Spangled Banner. I think, we're, I think we're kind of leading that charge, we're trying to, yep, we're trying to do that. All right, 
Any other comments? Again, you'll have another opportunity at the end of our meeting to speak again. Um, all right, the agenda item number three, our consent calendar. What is the wish of the board to adopt the consent calendar as presented? I move to accept the consent calendar as presented. Okay. I second. Okay. Um, any discussion about anything on the consent calendar? All right, all in favor say aye. aye. All right, the consent calendar is adopted. Uh, our reports, uh, 4.1, our student representative report, Miss Sophia Jeffries, welcome. We are so happy that you're here. Um, we can all step down, the students can lead the rest of it, but you have a report from the high school and other things, so take it away. Yeah, I have some updates about uh, the high school and the Career Technical Center. Um, the high school started a new semester on um, January 24th, so all students transitioned into new classes and having new teachers. And the day before, on the Professional Development Day, um, our National Honor Society provided lunch to the teachers. And then on the 26th, there were Semester 1 awards with certificates and prizes and ice cream for the students. And some of them that were um, given out were things like friendly to everyone, for example, which is uh, Jack Rossiter, who's usually here, got that. And another one was always has a smile on their face, which is the one that I got. And then for uh, our sophomore class of 2026 is selling plants through May. And then they're having a raffle for Valentine's Day, which they are going to do through February 11th and then doing the drawing on the 12th. Um, and our junior class of 25 is having a prom fashion show on February 27th, uh, February 17th, sorry. And the juniors are selling their prom tickets. Mm -hmm. um, our student council is planning a winter carnival for the whole school. And we are going to begin choosing our classes for next year in February. And um, there's some senior nights for basketball coming up. Um, the Girls Senior Night is tomorrow, the 31st. The boys is next Friday on February 9th. And then our unified basketball team is having um, it on this Friday, uh, the 2nd. And then some things for our Career Technical Center. Our medical assisting students put together some care packages for healthcare workers at Wentworth Douglas. This was part of a project the students organized to demonstrate what they can do to do community outreach. The baskets were delivered before our holiday vacation and then highlighted on the Wentworth Douglas social media. Our business entrepreneurship and marketing program was recognize, recognized for fourth place in a nationwide holiday marketing competition. The students designed Topper Shop Christmas Shop with an interactive promotional activities to increase foot traffic and merchandise sales. These, the students that were recognized include Leah Pena, Riley Barton, Morgan Newman, Logan Peralt, Geo Green, and Janish Patel. Our broadcasting students recently provide filming and coverage of the inauguration hosted in our Black Box Theater. Chaplain Kasul, who's also, also usually here, <laughs> was the co-director of the broadcast and was assisted by Jack Higgins and Nick Weil. Um, CTC program en enrollments are now open. Any student interested in taking a CTC program at Summersworth, Dover, or Rochester should visit the CTC office for mo more details. There are many flyers around the building and brochures and all the offices explaining how to apply and applications should be completed by the end of February. Families also receive a school messenger with information as well. And our black box theater is in production mode as we prepare for our annual spring musical, which is going to be the Little Shop of Horrors. Mm -hmm. And there will be a fully functional Audrey II making an appearance. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> um, with the start of second semester, our CTE program students will start to take some of their industry testing. Our animation and web design program has been the first program to start with students passing their Adobe certification tests. Thank you so much. That was a lot of information. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, Sophia. All right, moving to agenda item 4.2, our superintendent's report. Thank you. I'll start off with some fun. I'd like to invite up to the podium um, uh, Mr. Devin DiBernardo, our director of uh, music in Summersworth, if you could come up. And I would like to ask uh, Mr. Lucas Kelly to join him, as well as Mr. Raymond LaBelle and Mr. Riley Quist. And come on up. Raymond is not here tonight. I'm okay, so I, I just wanted to double check. So I want to just say a few words to these two fine young men to my left. Um, 
And here's what I'm going to say. We would like to wish a massive congratulations to you two, as well as our third incredibly talented students who have been accepted to perform in the New Hampshire All-State Music Festival. It's a great honor. I love it. Uh, my own kids participate in it. I went as a dad. It's a wonderful experience for all, for parents as well as uh, students. Um, your hard work, your dedication and passion have truly paid off. Uh, it's a remarkable achievement that showcases your exceptional talent in the arts. Oh, here we are. Here he is. Uh, welcome. Oh, I know. They're multi-talented people, and well, that's good. Uh, we are incredibly proud of you and everything that you've worked on um, to achieve. I, I know you've worked hard. I want to mention that the Allstate Festival, it runs from April 4th, which is a Thursday through Saturday. I believe your parents are going to go along with you, if I have that correct. I could have it wrong. I thought they might be attending, according to Mr. Thibault, but regardless of that, we have plenty of chaperones. You're going to be fine. Uh, Lucas Kelly is a senior. Uh, he'll be performing uh, in the Allstate Band on the French horn. I did not know you played the French horn. I thought you just played the trumpet, which is great. He's a multi-talented musician with the horns. Uh, he's going to be playing first horn, and that's a fantastic achievement for you, first horn. Uh, and Raymond and, and Riley, they're both sophomores. They're going to be performing in the Allstate Mixed uh, Choir. Um, I don't know who's the bass. Uh, let me guess. Are you the bass? Yep. Yeah. Raymond's the bass. A, 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 I'm sorry. A, and uh, Riley is the tenor. Right? I got that right. Good. Um, so I want to wish you so much congratulations, and I, I wish you a bright future. You're taking with you a talent that you can use throughout your life. I wish I could go back. I played a lot of sports. I wish I could go back and master the trumpet. I just something I wish maybe someday I'll do when I retire. But I, I think what you're doing, you know, you're all well-rounded. You do multi, multiple things. Music is, is cool, and I, I congratulate you, and I just want to thank you all for being here tonight to give me the opportunity to share in your success. And Summers where shares in and is very proud of you. So thank you. <laughs> Devin, I don't know if you want to say anything about these young men, or are you – did I capture it? I think you captured it All right. perfectly. Good, good. All right, thank you, folks, for coming in. Appreciate it. Now go get some, uh, go do your homework. Can we say something? Yeah. Oh, wait, sure, some sure. folks want to yeah. say something. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. Just wanted to offer congratulations. Um, second, the whole idea of music. I, when I was in high school, was in the marching band, played the alto sax, sang in the chorus. I still, to this day, many, many, many years out of high school, am active in chorus groups. So it's absolutely something, a talent that you can just keep going on and carry you through your life, whatever else you're doing. So kudos to you guys and best wishes in the, in the um, festivals and the, co the competitions. I just also want to congratulate you for, all, for making All States. That is an incredible feather in your cap and it's a wonderful experience. Uh, my daughter um, had the opportunity to go, go there. I don't remember being invited to anything other than the, uh, the end concert, but anyway, I am just so proud that we've got three of you going. So congratulations, choir and then orchestra, or I'm sorry, band. Awesome. Thank you also, congratulations, and uh, thank you very much um, for bringing music uh, to the world around you. Uh, we need more of that, thank you. No, we're just, you know, you guys are making our, our community really proud by, you know, and they're, as you can tell, they're, they're all athletes and um, uh, academically in um, just doing exceptional. So you really are an exceptional example of Hilltopper. Thank you. And I think there's one. All right. I have another uh, band-related item. Uh, Devin, if you could escort our, our student with... <laughs> A new uniform here? Who is this? This is our new uniform. I'll let you introduce I it. I did not know uh, yet. So <laughs> this is Von Surprise, Larson. Surprise, Mom. Yeah, we, we d we'll, do it. we'll do so much for our community and dress up in a new marching band uniform. Can we, uh, can, yes. 
Mr. Can we ask for a little context on wh why this is? Well, I, I, yeah, Devin, come on up. But I just want to say um, the uniforms that are, you're replacing were around two years after I graduated from high school, 1979. That's how old I am. I'm older than dirt now. But uh, it's just so nice to see the new uniform. And you harken back to 1977. Yeah, things were wonderful back then. We had velvet bow ties and we had the leisure suits. Uh, but this is such an improvement over that, and I can't say enough how proud I am that you're, you're wearing this so we could show this off tonight. But Devin, go ahead, speak. Yeah, I, I cannot thank you all enough for helping to make this happen. Um, my predecessor, Matthew Lagarde, for years he had had designs made up. He, we used for a few years donated uniforms from Lewiston High School up in Maine. The, la the last custom made Summersworth uniforms are from 1979. They've got the massive collars to really show off. And the excitement the kids had when I told them this was a reality and that we were able to make it happen, just it's incredible how much something like that can really do and bring pride to what we do. They work so hard and we are so happy that they can really show off as hilltoppers. Great, great, great. All right. <laughs> I really wanted the whole marching band to come in, but I, I, I couldn't arrange that. I think we only have one uniform at this at this point okay. too. So, all right, all right. I'm I'm all set. All Thank set. you. All right, yep. wonderful. Thank you. All right, moving to agenda item 4.3, our business administrator's report. Good evening, everybody. So in your packet is the update as of January 26th. Um, as you can see, our available balance did increase from the last meeting. We had about 35,000 available. That was pretty uh, tight at the last meeting. It has increased um, by 264,000. So that's good news. We're in better shape um, for salaries and benefits. I've adjusted all the encumbrances for the open position. So currently we have still the music teacher at Idlehurst and Maplewood four paraprofessional positions and at this time we had the HR coordinator position open but we have since um, offered that position to somebody so we will be filling that within the next couple of weeks. So I've encumbered the funds for the positions based on the number of days throughout the end of the year and each budget update if we haven't filled the positions I'll be reducing it so that available balance will grow. For special education we were able to release approximately 215,000 for out-of-district placements. So um, these were placeholders for students that we anticipated placing out of district, but they haven't been placed yet. So again, each month as we haven't placed them, that's another month that we don't have to pay for. So I'm reducing them as we go each month. We also had an increase um, for OTPT services for 54,000 for our preschool program. For utilities, again, I look at this each budget update and adjust accordingly based on usage. So um, at this time, I'm projecting a savings of approximately 15,000. I look at it every month and adjust accordingly. And then other expenditures, um, in the last update, we had put some additional items um, on hold as we saw how the budget played out. Um, so we are gonna move forward with replacing our tractor facilities. Our current one has been out of commission for a while, so it's been in the shop, we haven't been able to use it. Um, so we're in need of a replacement. Um, it was already approved through the additional funds from the supplemental as one of the uh, expenditures. So we're gonna be trading in the current tractor and the attachments that we had purchased for the tractor. Um, so the, they're gonna give us a credit towards the new tractor. So a 35,000, they're giving us a $19,000 credit for the tractor and all the attachments. Um, so we're gonna move forward with that because the net was like a $15,000 purchase. So we're gonna move forward with that due to the available balance. Um, in terms of revenue, we've received our payments from the state for a special ed aid and career tech tuition and transportation for the newer board members. And as a refresher, our special ed aid is for our students who have significant needs and their cost exceeds three and a half times the estimated cost per pupil. These are based on students from the previous year. So it's students that we paid for last year. We get the revenue in the following year. So we received that. And uh, the CTC is the same. Um, it's for students who attended our programs last year from other districts. Um, so then we get the revenue in the following year. In terms of the FY24-25 budget, we're in the process of finalizing. The budget committee's met a few times to look it over in preparation for our meeting on Saturday. That's a reminder, the board has a budget workshop on Saturday from eight to 12 where you'll see the full proposed budget. Um, at the time of this report, I, um, we were over the tax cap by approximately 1.7 million. So we've been meeting with the admin to determine areas where we can make reductions. 
um, the budget committee met tonight to discuss the, the reduction so that we can prepare the budget binders for the board for Saturday. Um, so be on the lookout for an email from me, probably Thursday. I'll be finalizing everything tomorrow. I'm hoping to get it out to you a few days in advance so you have time to look it over and digest it so that Saturday we can just hit the ground running. Um, I will also be sending it electronically. Uh, that's been a request, but I will have the budget binders prepared um, so that you can come in and take a look at them. It has all the backup information um, in it as well. So be on the lookout for that. And that's all I have. Uh, Board Member Tierney, yep. Um, Katie, for students from other districts that, do they tuition into our CTC? Is that, like, is that a, a, a cost that we get? I mean, yes. we, we get money for other districts. Okay. Yeah, Just and we pay for our students to go to the other CTC centers as well. Okay. But if they're, I mean, this might be a stupid question, but if you are already a student of Summersworth and you're in the CTC, that's just, that's. Yeah, there are students, yes. Yeah, there are no extra charge. Okay. Yes. Just curious. Mm -hmm. All right, moving to our city council update, Councillor Messier. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a lengthy report. Uh, the meeting last Tuesday, um, typical committee reports. Uh, you do have <clears throat> copy of the tax cap and what that means. It's going to be a tight budget season, um, and we'll go with that for now. Um, and they did advertise for the open ward five seat <clears throat> so i don't know where that stands but next meeting maybe we'll know so that's it thank you thank you all right moving through our committee reports um agenda item 5.1 our standing committees we'll start uh fresh with our budget and revenue committee we had just met uh board member marsh thank you um the fresh report um, is some, some, I'll try to minimize some of the redundancy. I hope I didn't steal your thunder. I'm sorry. No, no please. <laughs> please. That's okay. That's all right. I think the public appreciates that. Um, so we met twice since the last board meeting. First time, um, and first let me say, as, as was indicated, tis the season for budget. Um, January 18th, we discussed the FY25 budget, uh, including a uh, a tax cap amount of 74 cents per the city charter. That is school board side. That does not count the city council side um, that we need to submit, again, per city charter, um, which does indicate, as Katie indicated, um, cuts of about $1.7 million. Um, welcome to the board, school board member Sarah and, and Crystal. Um, and uh, we discussed some, uh, we discussed minimizing problem solving solutions and moving forward and, um, uh, and, and the further preparation for the meeting that we had this evening, um, where this evening we, we discussed the budget and we met and we discussed the initial administrative draft budget that was submitted to us. Um, including some potential solution solving measures moving forward in collaborate and, and uh, discussions with the school board and, and collaborations with our friends on the city council moving forward and in discussions. Um, and we, we moved the budget forward without recommendation to the full board uh, to discuss, review, and for future action. Our Building Grounds and Transportation Committee, uh, Board Member Clark. Yeah, hello. So we have yet to meet, but we do have a couple of meetings um, on the books. First is going to be February 7th at 5.15 at the SAU to go over our city improvement projects and see where we're standing. And then hopefully from there, we can um, formalize some time to go view the schools. So yeah, Wonderful. looking forward to that. Yep. Great. First one. All right, Educational Programs and Community Outreach Chair Wentworth is not here. Is anyone able to kind of a, give a brief summary of what was discussed at the meeting earlier today? Yeah, Board Member O'Brien Hart. Okay, Take no, uh, hi. hi. So the Education um, Committee, we, first of all, love to hear that the Student Health Center uh, is up and running and um, already providing lots of access with parent consent uh, for students to uh, receive services. So this is excellent. Um, so that is one thing we discussed. We also um, talked about, I have my notes, um, 
just concerns of, well, there's lots of things that we would like, right? And concerns of how the budget limits those things or our ability to access all of those things. This is the, the ever-present question with any kind of board is how are we going to make things work for us and at the same time um, use the budget to its fullest ability. So um, one of the things that was uh, discussed was um, just attendance um, and attendance concerns that we have for the district and um, trends that are being noticed of a high truancy rate and at the same time um, looking to get community involvement and connect with communities more, our community, to um, see if we can wrap around and support students uh, in attending school. And um, also looking at cell phone use in classrooms and at the high school very much considering um, not doing cell phones in classrooms at all. So um, in alignment with elementary school and the middle school. So. Those are the topics we covered. Wonderful, thank you so much, great job. All right, and our policy committee board <coughs> member Tierney, thank you. Yes, um, thank you. All right, so the policy committee met on the 25th and uh, of this month, of January, right? We're almost done with January. Um, we discussed policies, three policies, um, JKAA, the use of restraints and seclusion. Um, this one we looked at because it had been substantially revised by the NHSBA after the passage of two um, bills, SB 179 and HB 491. Um, so the district administration actually requested that we revisit this. Um, we did, we were also joined at that portion of our meeting by um, Amy Pillsbury and Lorraine, is it Field or Feld? Field. Field, okay. Um, to give their input from the special education perspective and they, um, provided some recommendations from a technical advisory committee um, just in regards to how seclusion is handled and um, I hope I kind of define this correctly but think about basically the students who are they are left alone in a space with with no one so literally secluded um, what we were told um, was that as a as a the the district we do not as a district we do not actually utilize seclusion as a management technique um, they consider that to be a decision made based on best practices um, the staff is trained to understand what it is so that they don't inadvertently leave a student in a secluded situation um, but basically we're we're not the kind of facility that's really equipped for that that's really for students who really need um, more excessive um, um, assistance. So um, I thought it was interesting to note that any use of restraints or seclusion must be reported on to the, by the school to the state um, for full transparency. Uh, we are currently, um, all districts around the state are awaiting an updated form, so JKAA-R from the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, this would be to standardize reporting across the state, but in the meantime, we do have our own, policy, our own form that we fill out. Um, so this has been brought forward to the board. Um, we basically, we recommend that we just adopt this NHSBA policy, withdraw the current one that we have for the district and utilize this one as it's been updated and it's really clear and, and full. Um, the next policy was policy DFGA. So this is in regards to crowd, crowdfunding and we currently in the district do not have a policy around this. Um, so it's a new policy and in practice crowdfunding has not generally been allowed. Um, the, we did concern, we discussed the concerns that have been brought forth in the past regarding this um, activity, um, but the uh, administration that is represented in our committee um, really felt like this is something that would be very well received and was practical and there really were no, um, no prohibitive issues um, to doing it. So. Um, we just, we, the one thing we just kind of talked about was making sure, you know, the, the, the concern, I guess the big concern might be that, you know, uh, and uh, Chair uh, Larson would use the scenario of like one classroom gets a robot, a fancy robot that no one else can use. Um, <laughs> so the idea would be how can we make sure that all students can benefit from, from the needs. And so the middle school has a, 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 a a method of ad addressing this, which I thought was actually really, really cool. It was basically they they request any of this funding at the team level, so that they all sort of know it. So it's not like one individual classroom getting getting the money. Um, so that is something that we are bringing forward to you guys um, for first reading tonight, and. Um, 
basically once that is adopted, the building administrators will, you know, address that with their, the implementation with their staff. Um, finally, really quickly, the updated policy KCD, this is in regards to public gifts and donations. Um, again, just subsequent uh, to changes made by the NHSBA after the passage of HB 207. Um, the couple dollar uh, figures I wanted to point out to you, so basically this increased the amount of unanticipated revenue, um, right, so gifts that we received that can be accepted by a school board without need for a seven day notice and public hearing from $5,000 to $20,000. So I'm not, I don't recall when this was up last updated, but basically if you just think about the economy now and everything, it's just this is sort of more in line probably with what is just practical. Um, also increase the amount um, of money a superintendent can receive from $500 to $2,500. So as a committee, we made no changes. We, we didn't, there was, we didn't feel there were any changes that needed to be made to this. Um, so similar to the first one, um, we recommend that we withdraw the current policy and adopt this NHSBA policy. And you have that also for first reading tonight. Oh, and the next meeting is February 6th at 545 in the ASCU office. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, our presentation this evening. Um, Superintendent, would you like to introduce our presentation? Sure. we have um, some folks joining us tonight. We've got uh, Lisa Coco, and we have Kate Gove, and we Kelly, have- Kelly uh, Hebert. What's that? Oh, she's not here. Yeah, we yeah. And, right. Yep, I got it. Uh, and Kelly Hebert, right? Yeah. Got that all right, That's good. Welcome. And they're going to make a presentation on da -da 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 -da. the title of the presentation is where we were and where we are going. And this is based on the K-12 population at Islehurst Elementary School. Um, good evening, everyone. Just before I, we begin, I just have to kind of go off script for a quick second because the thought that we have these little five-year-olds up here and then you have somebody behind us who's still sitting here, Lucas Kelly, who's graduating. He came through our system. He started at Idlehurst. I mean, what a special thing to see these little guys and what they grow up to be. Like, I, it will make me like I could barely get through that Star Spangled Banner, but we know that always kills me. But um, and just the amount of pride you have as somebody who's been here in this district for 20 years. My daughter's now graduating with Lucas, so I saw him on a personal level grow. And just to think that like, this is how they start and this is how our students end is a really special, um, huge tribute to what we're all doing here. And thank you, Lucas, for sticking around because I'm sure it's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> Um, all right, so good evening, uh, Superintendent Kaczynski, uh, Katie Krause, uh, school board members, our community, um, our admin team, uh, the amazing admin team behind me, and our dear colleagues. Uh, welcome to the new school board members who are here. Um, this is kind of a, a great way to kick off um, what we do at Idlehurst. That's perfect timing for you to all learn how amazing our staff and students are. Uh, quick thank you to Ms. Martinelli and Ms. Kay. Uh, for bringing out our families this morning. Um, these little five-year-olds came out on their one night um, and they did such a wonderful job representing who we are. Uh, we're very excited to um, present this evening uh, to review where we have been and where we are going. Uh, times have changed. Um, students entering our schools have changed. Our approaches have changed. Um, over the last few years, Kate and I have always really prided ourselves on asking our staff to work smarter, not harder, and unfortunately, that's no longer reality. So um, they, sadly, our teachers are working even harder than they ever have before, if that's even possible. They're spending endless hours working diligently to meet the diverse needs of every single child walking through our doors. Children with significant and greater needs than ever before. Our special ed staff has to work harder to learn new ways to provide instruction and learn new interventions and teaching strategies. Teachers and tutors have, to, have had to attend hours of PD over the summer and on their own time, uh, learning new ways to meet these evolving needs. Staff has gained forces with community organizations uh, such as our Summers Earth Ready Together Coalition, our Greater Seacoast Families First, our Stratford County YMCA, our Stratford Learning Center, um, all different community resources that we are now taking advantage of to get our children ready, um, as ready as possible with the resources that we have. Um, so tonight, 
Idlehurst Associate Principal Ms. Gove and Idlehurst Reading Specialist Kelly Hebert will give us insight into where we have come from and where we are going. We are passionate at Idlehurst that all 86 staff members in whatever role they play, our secretaries, our custodians, paraprofessionals, and our teachers, they each play an intricate part in coming together, lying one brick at a time, building a foundation that allows our children to be successful on their individual educational journeys. Uh, we are beyond proud of what we've achieved and we are excited to share. Um, after this stressful part, um, please enjoy a pretty great video and you can really get a, a, an insight of how amazing uh, Idlehurst community is. So thank you for your time tonight. Good evening. Over the past three years, the themes the Idlehurst Universal team has chosen are team, growing together, and you are the piece that makes the difference. Journeying through and past the restrictions of a global pandemic, Idlehurst educators have exemplified these themes as we have strengthened both our individual and our collective knowledge base and skill set. Our Leadership Council has worked over the past two and a half years with the late Pam Clark and more recently with educational consultant Kevin Murphy to create and implement a distributive leadership model at Idlehurst. Currently, the Leadership Council is researching professional learning communities, a structured approach to meetings that informs instruction through collaborative, data-driven conversations. Idlehurst educators with expertise in data, interventions, curriculum, systems planning, and pedagogy have led the building and professional development in areas such as Fontes and Pinnell, Secret Stories, and Hegarty. Additionally, we have worked with Maplewood educators to consider curriculum alignment not only between grade levels, but also between the two elementary schools. This past summer, our team benefited from training and consultation in trauma-responsive schools by Dr. Cassie Yackley, training in the best practices of mathematics instruction by Rob Lukasiak, and training in the science of reading by Jen Sear. This evening, Kelly Hebert, Idlehurst Reading Specialist is here to tell you about how we have journeyed into the science of reading guided by her excellent leadership. She really loves to present. Too. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right, you ready? Okay. Okay. Over the last few years, Idlehurst Elementary recognized the changes needed to be made for, to our core instruction to marry, I'm sorry, to be made, I am very nervous, <laughs> needed to be made. It's just, it's I know, it's just you guys. Core instruction, I know. <laughs> core instruction to, <laughs> let's start over. Um, so really what I'm trying to say is what we wanted to do was marry our current instruction with the science of reading. Using these five pillars of early literacy as our guide, we made some changes this school year that I am excited to share with you tonight. Our journey toward the science of reading goes back a few years when we implemented Hegarty, a phonemic awareness curriculum for grades pre-K through two. This implementation directly addresses the phonemic awareness need for all of our students and satisfies the first pillar in that previous um, let me go back up for a second in that previous image. The next slide is what we're going to be looking at. This is a slide here of a sample of the end of the year data for kindergarten. At the beginning of the year, one kindergartner was in the green for phonemic awareness. Due to the daily practice in our classrooms, by the end of the year, 63 of our kindergartners were in the green. <clears throat> that same year, interactive read-alouds became part of every classroom's daily schedule. Many of us have fond memories of gathering at our teacher's feet. We fell in love with reading as we rooted for our favorite characters and dreamt of faraway places. Interactive read-alouds allows our students to interact with the text. We pause, ask questions, predict, and infer. We are building background knowledge 
vocabulary, and modeling a variety of ways to think deeply. This summer, we introduced M-Class to the Idlehurst teachers and staff. This change to our universal screener brought us one step closer to satisfying the remaining pillars of literacy. It is through this assessment, Dibbles 8, that we can measure the basic pre-reading skills that are necessary for fluent decoding and fluent reading. Students are assessed in several one-minute subtests. The student's score on the subtests tells us whether the student is likely on track to learn to read or whether the student may need some help. Creating groups for intervention is now easier than ever and more importantly can be done within an hour. The M-Class intervention program determines the ideal instructional focus for each student and builds small groups of students who will share that same instructional need. Interventionists are provided with detailed lessons that are directly related to the areas in need for the students. We use this platform to progress monitor or check up on those students every eight to 10 days. The results of the assessments are immediate, allowing us to analyze the results and then jump into action. What I wanted to share with you on the next slide here is a sample of one of our kindergarten students. Um, and what I wanted to show you here is this subtest is known as letter naming. At the very beginning of the year, you can see the red dot in August, September, the student knew 13 of the letter names. By December, January, actually, when we, pro when we benchmarked them again, you can see the progression to 41. And then the program itself will project a growth to 52 by the end of the year. So you can see that we are able to kind of keep track right away. Uh, the next slide is another one. This is an example of a student who receives the benchmark, but also receive, is in one of our intervention groups. So you can see the little white dots along the way. So this student is in intervention with us. At the beginning of the year, uh, we did the subtest of phonemic awareness. They scored a zero. Um, so they Im immediately went into one of our groups. Every eight to 10 days, we are, we are progress monitoring. So you can see that first mark, um, they increased their score to a four, and then you can see um, the, where they just took off. So with that core instruction, with Hegarty, with everything that was happening in their intervention groups, you could see that child just take off. Um, during at, in January when we did our middle of the year, you can see that they are in the blue, which we call above benchmark. And uh, this is my last one I wanted to show you. This is another, this is a real, more realistic look at some of our data. Um, we, I, although we wish all of our students took off like that, you are gonna see our progress monitoring bubbles in there where they kind of are they're get, make, making some gains, and the next time we progress monitor, they, they drop down again. So this is a little bit more realistic of what we're seeing in our groups. But you can still see that from the beginning of the year to the middle of the year, we've made some progress. And then again, we have a projected growth based on how they did between the two benchmarks um, in May for 15. And this is decoding, which means that they are segmenting nonsense words and putting them all back together. Um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, Liza and Kate know that I love looking at this stuff. I kind of much more comfortable talking to you about this. Um, um, but I really just wanted to thank everyone who made M Class happen at Idlehurst. This is a time saver. This is what's best practice, in my opinion, for our students. It's a all-in-one system uh, for science of reading. Um, it's powered by Dibbles, and it's going to help us measure and strengthen the foundational skills that all of our students need to become confident readers. So, thank you.
you have any questions maybe for um, Eber while I sure. play this? Because this is kind of our so is this currently a program that's only available at for elementary level, or is this something that can be considered for middle and high school? Or, or? Uh, there's a lot of conversations. We uh, get together. Uh, I get together with the reading specialist at Maplewood as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are talking and sharing ideas and sharing the data, and um, we will see. They're eager, and we just yeah. have to kind of keep talking. And a lot of times, wh what happens is. Um, I share my data, they kind of take a look and we see the progress and we see if it's going to move mm -hmm. and slide right into the third graders mm -hmm. and so on in fourth grade. So for this program, because uh, if, for those of us who aren't really familiar with it, so what, what was, ha can you just sort of describe like what's the big change? Like what do you, what do you kind of get to do now that maybe you didn't do before you had this program? Sure. It's kind of like um, when a, you walk into the doctor's office and you say you don't feel well. Well, we would have children who didn't feel well, right? Mm -hmm. We had students who didn't know, they were not succeeding in reading. Now, with this type of assessment, we're able to pinpoint exactly what it is that they need. We can target the, that area, hopefully close those gaps, and then we can send them on. And if they say they don't feel well again, we can figure out what that area is, and we can kind of just keep building and building. OK, so it's like a diagnostic Absolutely. tool then? OK, Absolutely. very cool. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> no, I love seeing your data. So I'm a special educator, and I'm a certified Norton Gillingham. So like, I love seeing the multi-pronged um, approach to reading uh, the different areas. I love seeing the data, like what hard work your staff has done to, to bring those scores up. I know the feeling of like seeing those go up. Uh, my question is just out of curiosity, does M-Class um, help identify uh, students with dyslexia specifically? Like how does it address dyslexic individuals? Yes, it does. It is a, um, it is known as a dyslexia screener as well. Okay, cool. Um, the, what the program does is as they take their subtests and as they're calculating the results, it will flag the student for us within the oh, program. that's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, there are other components in there. They also have vocabulary and spelling. So there's, there's a number of factors. Um, and with, through their algorithm, they are able to flag for us. That's really cool because the structured reading intervention is the thing that's going to make the difference. And it looks like it's making the difference with um, the school. So that's excellent. Nice work. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have a question so much as this is super exciting. And I'm super proud of our teachers here. Um, I love data like this. I, you can't ignore it, right? It's so great and in your face and helps pinpoints. Um, I am super curious about if we can bring it to like the middle school or even the high school to help with those eventually. I know we're like doing it just for elementary, but super exciting stuff, guys. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. I just want to interject. Kelly did the research, brought it forward both to building level and district level, level administrators last year, worked with the grant manager to get the funding, presented it to our team, and said, this is something I'd like to pilot. 100% of our classroom teachers, most of our, if not all of our special educators, and many of our paraprofessionals chose to give up summer time to do the training so that we could start and fully implement in year one rather than going through three years of rolling this out because our team goes above and beyond in that way. Thank you, Kelly. I the host can mail the Drive to foster. Lifelong learners. Who will aspire to me? It's a heart, everybody gets a soul, everybody gets a mind to let them know that we can be smart, that we can be kind, that we can be living by giving and loving all the time. So on the days when it's feeling tough, and it seems like you don't have enough Well, let's be thankful, thankful. for our friends and family And grateful for the air that we breathe And appreciate everything that we have today 
Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate. Cause ever since the day you were born, yeah, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Everybody gets the land, and everybody gets a seed. So everybody lend a hand to those in need. Cause we can be nice, we can be nice, we can all share, and we can keep growing together. It's better when everyone cares. So on the days when it's feeling tough. And it seems like you don't have enough. Well, let's be thankful for our friends and family and grateful for the air that we breathe and appreciate everything that we have today. Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate. Cause ever since the day you were born, yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, we've got a lot to be thankful for. So, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my family. I am thankful for my neighbor. I'm thankful for my dog. I'm thankful for the food I have to eat. I'm thankful for my heart. I am thankful for my grandma and grandma. I'm thankful for my teacher. I am thankful for my house. We're thankful for the earth. So on the days when it's feeling tough And it seems like you don't have enough Well, let's be thankful for our friends and family And grateful for all the air that we breathe And appreciate everything that we have today Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us It's good to be compassionate Cause ever since the day you were born Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for Thankful Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for Grateful Kindness, kindness Oh, whenever you find this You will see the world's a better place Kindness, kindness, oh, whenever you try this, you could bring a smile to someone's face. Well, it doesn't take much, and it doesn't take long. No, it doesn't cost a thing, no, and there's no way to do it wrong. You can try it any time, you can plant it where you want, and you can grow it in your heart. Then give it out to everyone Kindness, kindness Oh, whenever you find this You will see the world's a better place Get your choppers ready Say yes Yes Good Yes Yes, yes. yes. Fun Fun Words that rhyme with am Am Ooh, now what do you think? Stamp Stamp, good Lay 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 Red. Say cheese, cheese. without ch cheese. Say thin, thin. without th Say chart, chart. without ch art. Raise the pie again. Who can tell me how do we know that these two sounds say shh? Natty. In the library, they love to read books, so they go into the library, and everybody else, every single letter is talking. And they and they going to read their books, so they say shh. Nice job. What does S and H say? Okay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and today is
music at the end, but that is a wrap. Um, and a huge uh, shout out to Leah who put the um, all that together and all the teachers who helped um, making that. And again, thank you everybody for your time. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Board Member Clark. I'm gonna say really quick. We have the cutest kids in any district ever. I'm just saying, and the best teachers. Thank you. That's it. The cutest kids. Yeah, I. Just real quick. I, you know, when I sit here and I think about all the all the meetings where we get to watch these really amazing videos, it kind of makes me want to like sneak into other district school board meetings and find out do they do this too? I mean, I'm on. I'm on. I'm asking an, a serious question. Like, no, these are the best ones. No, yeah. I'm not even saying like the quality. I'm just saying like, do other districts show off their kids like this? This is great. Yeah, yeah. We did in York. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in Maine. Well, I think it's a great idea. It's a good so. thing. Yeah, it's a great yeah. thing. Yep. Yep. Board member Marsh and anyone else. Just kudos. Um, and when I see presentations like this, I can't help but to think about the effort that went on to put this together. Uh, not just the presentation, but what you're presenting about. Um, so I want to thank everyone involved um, for your heart and also your brain, your skill, um, and the combination of that um, that has um, uh, forwarded you to towards um, the career in education. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you so very much for all your hard work. And I don't want to be a bubble buster, but I do want to acknowledge that I heard in there, as we're going into the budget season and, and working on budgets, that the teachers are working harder. But I also heard in the presentation that there were ways of, you know, teachers working, um, or that M class was helping facilitate. So I just want to acknowledge that I heard both of those messages, um, and I thank the teachers for all their hard work. Um, I don't you know, know that the answer is readily available right now to me, but I, will, I heard that and I want to um, drill down into that. But thank you again. I love these presentations as, as everyone else does. Thank you. I know I had a question for the person who's taking minutes. Oh, right. All right. So before we get into um, my um, item on school calendar. Katie, did the board, I, I don't recall it, can you refresh my memory, did the board approve EHAB for a second read in adoption? I, yeah. I haven't gotten to that yet. Okay. It was just Susan's board, um, Paul, okay, thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. That's where I got Good evening. Okay. All right. Okay. Moving to agenda item number seven our policy ad adoption. Uh, we have three policies for first reading. Uh, do I have a motion to read these by title only, please? <laughs> motion to read these by title only. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Take it away. All right. Policy DFGA, crowdfunding. Policy JKAA, use of restraints and seclusion. Policy KCD public gifts donations. Okay, great. They're for a first read. They'll be at our uh, February meeting for um, adoption. Uh, we only have one policy for second reading EHAB, our data governance and security. Any discussion from the board on this? We'll just do I have a motion to approve it as presented? I motion to approve as presented. Okay, second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, we've adopted data governance and security, EHAB. Uh, we have no new business this evening. We do have um, the school calendar under old unfinished business, um, the proposed 24 25 calendar. We've had a first look at this. It's been a while, so I don't know if yeah. any feedback or. I have some feedback. You? Yep. Uh, just as another change I want to bring to your attention. Um, after your last meeting, um, typically what I do with calendars is bring it forward for a first read and then a second read for approval. It gives the public some time to weigh in. It gives you some time to think it through. And um, just so you know, in terms of the calendar development process, I work with a lot of superintendents in the area so that we're all jibing in terms of 
our kids going to the CTC center, so we try not to have that many dissimilar days. So I, I do that initially with other superintendents. And then I draft a, uh, a calendar, uh, look at the historical perspective, for example. You don't have kids come to school on Election Day because of the polling. Um, I also run it by the three union presidents. Um, Celeste is here. She can vouch for me. Um, we, we, so I do that, and I also run it by the administrative team. So last uh, month you had uh, a draft calendar, and that had already been vetted by all those folks. And then one of the superintendents picked up on the fact um, that on September 10th, uh, New Hampshire has its, uh, um, its primary day, which is September 10th. And in the last calendar, we had school on that day. So uh, some of us had to make a change, including Summersworth. And so what we did in Summersworth, and I did run it by all the union folks in our administrative team, um, I changed that day to make September 10th a voting day. You'll see it's a teacher workshop voting day. And we got rid of the teacher workshop on 12-6-24. Uh, so that now becomes a... Um, um, yeah, and that needs to come off the calendar. That's I need to take that off. There is no teacher workshop in in December. Okay. December second. Okay. Right? All right. Uh, just so you know that. And um, other than that, we just changed the number of students' days and teaching days in parentheses. That's the little minutia. Uh, but that's kind of where it's at. So I'm looking for your approval tonight to adopt the calendar. Then I can send it off to the other superintendents, and we're good to go Perfect. for another year. Yep. So I'll make a motion right. to adopt the calendar as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Superintendent Kaczynski, for you. that. Appreciate That's been it. a lot of moving parts with primaries yep. this this year. Oh yeah. Um, all right. Our future meeting dates: February third, this Saturday, here at eight a.m. is our budget workshop. Um, I'm going to. Uh, give a time frame of three hours uh, max. It may take that, but that's probably will be our longest meeting of the year. And then the fifth, uh, budget and re revenue at the SAU, and our next meeting is the 13th. Um, there's gonna be a budget presentation at six or 6.30. Katie, is it six o'clock? Is it 6.30? There's a six o'clock presentation followed by a public hearing okay, at six thirty. Okay, great. And then six. Then the yeah. meeting. The meeting immediately following, and then the seven p.m. Yeah. board. Oh, that was fixed. That. Wonderful. Thanks, Katie. All right. Any comments by visitors this evening? Do not see any. Oh yes, of course. Oh. I'm not a Summersworth resident, so I'm asking the board to indulge me for a minute. Sure. She's a Summersworth employee. Yeah, I don't think we actually have a rule. Of no, we don't. No, we just don't. say you just yeah. state your name. And, and just who you are, and, and who you are. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for indulging me. I'm Sue Green. Speak into the mic. Oh, it's green. There you go. It's green. Oh, good. Am I on now? Yes, you All are. Right. Now I'm going to stand away from it. Um, I'm Sue Blair. I am a lot of things. But I was hired as the grants manager for SAU 56 and 104. I have two things I want to say especially because it's budget season. What you saw tonight from Idlehurst was primarily funded through our grants, and it's really important to say. So we have several grants that are su supporting SAU 56, Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV. At another time, I'll s be more than happy to go over those. You, as a matter of fact, you'll hear more about them as we go through the budget season. But what... Um, the Heidelhurst administrative staff was talking about was primarily funded, if not, and I'm not going to say 100% funded because I'm not absolutely sure, but it was funded through our title grants. Also, I want to do a little bit of, because I know a lot of parents watch this, um, those funds come from the little form that parents fill out for free and reduced, and this is the first year that we have been able to support our high school with Title I funds. So um, they're not quite a school-wide Title I school. They're missing it by less than 2%. So if I can encourage our families to fill out those forms, even if you don't think you qualify, because as you can see, all the numbers are changing, right? You never know. So um, just a little bit of push for all of our families in Summersworth to complete those forms, I would greatly appreciate it because we can do so much for our kids. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for indulging All right, me. absolutely. I just see the staff in the audience. Any other comments by visitors this evening? All right, seeing none, comments by board members. Just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, board Member Brown, followed by Tierney. Okay, I raise my hand quickly, thank you. Um, because I am so excited for our, our, our indoor track squad because we have three athletes that qualified for states. So uh, we have one more qualifying meet on, thir on, uh, f on uh, Saturday, but then uh, we've got states on the 11th, so we're very, very excited to have a squad three deep this year. <laughs> so I wanted to say for the record, um, you'll be hearing uh, from me in the future in terms of the results. Um, tonight was more the arts and music, and in a future meeting we'll showcase some of those fine athletes. So. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to bring up a couple of things in regards to the Student Base Health Center, which I'm very excited uh, to hear. We, you know, we got an update tonight at the Ed Programs meeting. Um, it was just really nice to hear that it's going and it's being used. It's you know very. Um, it's uh, what we're understanding right now is a lot of kids who might otherwise have difficulty um, receiving mental health services are being able to get that. So that's amazing to hear because just the reality is in the state, um, I mean, I can't speak for the whole country, but I know in this state, uh, it's just, it's been a real challenge for kids who, you know, might uh, need, in need, be in need of those services. The waiting lists are really, you know, long. Um, so I just wanted to mention two things, and I said during the meeting that I would bring this up because just for any public that's listening, I think it's important for the public to know this because I, I just know that there is some, in other parts of the state, concern around just parental notification and consent and things. And so wanted to make it very clear, no child, no student will get any services in this school-based health clinic without parental consent. So I just, again, I never know where to look for the camera. Um, <laughs> but this is nothing that kids cannot just walk in and just all, you know, be seen without any, the parents will be aware, um, permission you know, needs to be granted. Um, and so just be assured of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, oh yes, just that this, so what this is, is Goodwin Health um, is managing this. So the, the, the services are being rendered by professional medical staff. This isn't something where the school staff is going in and servicing the, the kids. And so just, I know, I, I just feel like there's misinformation out there in other parts of the state. Um, and I don't, I'm not gonna speak, I don't know what other districts might be doing, but just, just so that people know. And I, I think if this becomes a trend, I think we could be a trendsetter. You know, I think we can really model how this can be done. That there's, you know, everything is above board, everything is done with consent, everything is done being managed by health professionals. So I just kudos to us for, for doing this and, and the ben biggest benefit, of course, is for the kids who, you know, get to use it. Thank you. Lighthouse District. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I have a quick question. I'm hoping maybe you could help remind me potentially and maybe the moms and dads at home and parents and caregivers or whatever but um can parents sign the kids up online can they sign the consent online is that available online now or is I, it just through the school i, I believe remember. it's only so right now i believe there's just there's a consent form a paper-based form mm -hmm. i don't believe there's anything online and what um what we talked about during the meeting tonight was that um in many cases parents who were already at the school for a meeting with their child were able to sign right then and there. And then for those, um, and, they, they, and the, the school staff is um, going to consider, actually it's time the school staff, it's the, the people at Goodwin who we're working with might will come in and work with students and basically say, hey, you know, here, if you want to go home and, you know, they can take this consent form home and the parents can sign it. And then I double checked again just to make sure everything's, you know, on the up and up. Um, if the kids come back with a signed consent form, the school will, fo the nurse will follow up and say, hey, this, you know, we see this form has been signed, there are no appointments or anything will be set up until they get verification from the parent. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I think at this point it's just Thank a paper, paper form. Uh, yep, O'Brien Hart. Oh yeah, just to, to add on to what um, council or whatever school board, board person, 
<laughs> Thanks. Poor member, poor member. Tyranny. Um, the, uh, um, oh, criminy. I was so worried about address that I didn't. <laughs> Hold on. The um, form. form home. Oh, it's a process that can be initiated not just by the students, but by parents, like, can initiate right. And not only for mental health services, they mentioned uh, sports physicals tonight, so which is also a really important aspect of the service. So anyway. I do want to mention in your board packet tonight, as part of the consent calendar, you approved the, you approved. There is a form. It, talk, it spelled it out. The other thing is I, I want you to know that prior to this going form being put out, um, we consulted with our attorney. Uh, school district attorney to make sure the roles and responsibility of Goodwin and the Summersworth school district were, were separate and succinct. Yep, uh, that's great. important to note. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you both. Yep. Yep, board Member Marsh. Thank you. Uh, this has already been mentioned, but reminded of the community um, that there is a budget workshop, 8 a.m., right and early. Um, it is open to the public, uh, so the public the community members certainly can come and and observe the presentation and and uh, the discussion that we have as uh, representatives of of the community. Um, and to piggyback on something that uh, Board Member Brown mentioned earlier, um, I do listen. <laughs> um, right, I, we've heard it many times of working harder, not only working smarter but working harder. And every year especially during budget season, we talk about the need for innovation, right? Well, we we'll just need to be more innovative. Uh, I've heard it school board level, council level, um, state level. Um, and innovation is important. However, innovation alone won't power a district, school district forward with education. And just as money alone um, without using it effectively <clears throat> won't power a district forward. That said, funding money is that is like the blood to the circulatory system, right? Which helps power that the hearts, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in the brain, in the minds of, of our children. Um, and so that said, I'm confident that through these budget discussions um, on Saturday and the ongoing discussions after that, um, that we'll be able to solution find. We'll do some cringing because the d decisions are going to be difficult as they are every year. Um, but I'm confident that we'll be able to work through those differences and together as a board, as a community, um, while collaborating with our friends on the city council as well, uh, and come to a common ground, albeit likely imperfect. Um, but I'm looking forward to the discussions and um, solution finding to minimize any potential negative impact to the best of our ability. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, yep. I just wanted to piggyback on something that, thank you for that. Um, uh, I wanted to just encourage anyone who, um, I'm trying to say this in a nice way. <laughs> I would encourage the public to come out if, if you're inclined to sort of question, you know, why does the school district need all this money and why are our taxes this way and that, I, I would encourage you to come and listen and so you can really hear for yourself and see where the money goes, where it's needed and if money is reduced in one place, what are the consequences, all of that. I mean, those are all just, I, I think that being informed is just the best sort of antidote to that sort of frustration of, it, it, you know, it's like if you, if, if you kind of think about it before any of us joined the board, uh, a school board, maybe we were like, why was, why would the schools do this? Why does that happen? Rah, 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 right? And then you get here and you actually learn and you understand more. And I just, I personally run into people who 
aren't involved and in, you know in the district maybe they don't even uh, it, they, they don't come to the meetings or they don't they're not on a board they never served on a board they don't understand and they have a lot of frustration and then I just tell them like well yeah this this the money is needed and it's used for this that and the other thing it's not just being like thrown into the wind so I just would encourage people to come and, and listen and learn it's great that we're in the environment of comprehension and education and hopefully patience and respect and all that as well other board members all right I just wanted to th say thank you to Idlehurst and our uh, state music um, all state musicians I think that this kind of levels us with keeping in mind students first I think especially with seeing those those children um, doing the pledge and we can kind of keep that with us as we make decisions going forward with that don't forget our great band uniform model oh <laughs> and our 44 year old overdue band uniform model von larson i love you okay with that i'm looking for a motion to go into non-public per rsa 91 a 2 a a 3 a c and e you can just Okay. Say what I said, or say. I'll I'll make a motion that we go into um, non-public pursuant to the authority of RSA 91A 2A and also RSA 91A 3A C and E. Perfect. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Thank you. Maggie Larson. Yes. Todd Marsh. Yes. Carrie Clark. Yes. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Here. Crystal yes. De Saint Croix. Yes. Marsha Brown. Yes. Susan Tierney. Yes. Thank you. If we can just make sure our microphones are off and